Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Shett, episode 521, featuring an interview with the developers of Coverton, a really fun creature-based, uh, or creature-themed uh, action role-playing game. Uh, I heard about this, I played the demo, really had a good time, and I thought it'd be really cool uh, to get the developers on to talk about their project. Uh, Naren and Vala, uh, of course, they agreed to show up, <laughs> as you will soon see. And I think you'll really like uh, uh, their design philosophy. Uh, and there's them. <laughs> They're pretty cool people. Uh, they hail from the country of Sweden. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here are Naren and Vala. Oh, Naren and Vala. After. After. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I yes. guess I'm guessing you guys have been pretty busy these past couple of weeks, huh? Mm, yeah, yeah it's course. been a lot. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, exciting times also, but um, yeah, definitely a lot with the Kickstarter and trying to balance it with the development. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The pretty so try to. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Val. Uh, try to keep developing. Uh, at at the same time, so not only Kickstarters, yeah, it uh, has been a lot, of course, but it's it's fun, so it's okay. Yeah, I've heard some people say that the Kickstarter is harder than the game development. <laughs> <laughs> we In get a lot way. of help. We get a lot of help from uh, Anshar uh, Publishing, our our publisher, so mm. they help us a lot. Oh, at least at least we we don't have to do everything mm. ourselves. So. Well, that's a big plus. It's a big yeah. plus. Just looking mm -hmm. here at the, the page, I assume you probably look at a couple times mm -hmm. a day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Try not to, but yeah. <laughs> well, it's you've easy. already, uh, you made your goal already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like a couple of days ago. Uh, time flies by fast, but yeah. Uh, a little party, some champagne or something. When... <laughs> uh, we're <laughs> saving it for... Uh, uh, we have uh, planning for it next week or when it's all you know finished the uh, first of march mm. and then we pop in the champagne <laughs> yeah this is a great great page yeah i, I think Thank it's you. great that you did the demo mm -hmm. yeah i talked to a lot of people about kickstarters uh, and they talk about how important it is to have a good demo mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, you feel like that's that helps you? Yeah, of course. So people can try it if if they are not sure if uh, is this for me or what is it about. They can always try the demo. So uh, it always it gives help. a bit more, you know, confidence for mm. the backers. I think because you know, as it's been with some Kickstarter history, <clears throat> some games haven't maybe been delivered or yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I mean, us being like the first project also, it's extra important to show that we have something. Yeah, because uh, people can't uh, make the difference sometimes between a, just a trailer and something just made up for, for just a trailer or if it's a game that is recorded. It's very hard to tell the difference for, for most people. So, so having a demo shows that we have this and this is what you will get in the in the end but more so that yeah, sounds good i just finished the demo last night <laughs> <laughs> okay all yeah. right it's fine i said uh, so uh the only thing i didn't like was you know it was when it was uh, oh it's over now no <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's not super long. No, but, it's, it's uh, quite short. But... I don't want to keep it tied up here too long today because I want to get this game in my in my mm. hand as soon as possible. Mm. Oh, great! So uh, yeah, then you uh, you're you enjoyed all... it then at least. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, it's good. Mm. Yeah, you're from uh, Sweden, is that? Yes. Yes. What's from, the uh... game? Is there a pretty big gaming industry there, or is it? Yeah, hey, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is big. I mean. Uh... In our city, maybe it's not as big, but there are many like indie companies. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean Stockholm and Malmo and more. They have like these big players, of course. The mm -hmm. Dice and uh, Avalanche and what's more, Paradox. You know. Oh sure. Um, 
Ro Rovio, right? The Angry Bird makers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I mean, this Swedish people are really good at making games. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of support from the community, sounds like. Yeah, we have a local, like, we live in Linköping, it's called. So it's like two hours south of Stockholm and by car, approximately. And um, we have, like, a local, uh, yeah, game development community called East Sweden Game because it's, yeah, our municipality is called East Sweden in Swedish, so... Uh, yeah, so they have helped us really a lot. They're really good to have, like in many ways. So, what are the, how do the what do you two uh, do on the game? I know you probably have different roles, right? But are there different specialties, or is it how does it work? What are the team yeah. dynamics? Yeah, yeah, I do the programming, the animation. Um... Yeah, mo mostly mostly those things and effects a little bit of effects. Mm. And I have done some three D. I do level design and like uh, decorate the levels and uh, design. We both do design yeah. and then some writing as well and uh, all the other stuff are surrounding the like company. The company stuff. Company stuff. But uh, yeah, right now we also have a third guy. Uh, uh, who's been was like for how long is it now? A half. year. Yeah. No, no half year. Uh, yeah, half year, maybe. Nine. Half year. Who's helping us mostly with uh, VFX also? So yeah, a yeah. lot. Of you get along pretty well. <laughs> seems like I mm -hmm. seem to hate each other. So I guess that probably no. helps. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we don't seem to be get tired of each other. I mean, we're both working together in a couple and living together in a small space, but somehow we manage it all. It's never like, oh my god, we can't do that. Oh, I wanted to do it this way. There's no kind of yeah, no of course, way. of course, there are discussions. <laughs> Not gonna lie, no. <laughs> no. I wanted it this way, <laughs> like. No, but but, uh, uh, but uh, most of the time we are we're mm -hmm. on the we agree pretty much uh, um, about most things so we don't struggle so much in that regard yeah we're good at <laughs> discussing things with each other and be happy compromise mm -hmm. <laughs> be happy without oh, compromise. Oh, we'll steam all the play there <laughs> <laughs> oops yeah you know i was thinking about that I had, um uh, ken and roberta williams on uh, do you know mm. them, Sierra? Mm. I was just thinking about all the sort of power couples that have uh, been part yeah, of our it's really fun. Corey yeah. and uh, Corey Cole come to mind, and, mm. and uh, Serpent in the Stag Lands, those developers. Yeah, yeah, and we know also like at least two more couples who also do games, so it's mm. fun to see. I mean. Some people are like, oh, how could you ever work with your partner? I would mm -hmm. never. But I think it's... I like they don't like their partner very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, if you can't make a game together, it's not like you have to, like, have teamwork if you have a child together as well. I mean, if you look at that the way, so I don't know. And being able to teamwork with your partner, I think it's regardless what you do, important, right? Mm -hmm. So... I think so. I think it probably leads to a more balanced game too, because just mm. one dude making a game, mm. you know, uh, it's kind of missing that other element. Mm. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, and it's. Uh, I mean, it's. I think it would be. I don't know if. Uh, I mean, I respect solo devs very much because I don't know if I could manage that. Like, don't have anyone to like discuss things with, and huh. you know, uh, don't have the when you're not confident in something, then you can uh, take help of the other part, you know. Not having that must be really tough, I think. But mm -hmm. so, I mean, we we'll rely a lot on each other as well. So, well, seems good. I mean, you got this far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you were asking me what I thought about the demo. You know, I, I, I really enjoyed it. It, it kind of reminded me. I was thinking about games like uh, World of Warcraft, 
Mm -hmm. have uh, this class, the Druids. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. like the Druids and the Hunters. Yeah. Uh, I never really liked those classes too much because I felt, you know, it just didn't really feel as... I think your game makes that more fun, right? Mm -hmm. Transform into something, uh, ride on something, the uh, companionship with the animals, you know, so mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe mm -hmm. they'll... Be, I hope they don't rip you off. You <laughs> 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 handle it a lot better. It's a lot more fun. That's nice to hear, yeah. I think you've been getting pretty good comments and have you been getting pretty good feedback so far from people that have played the demo and yeah I think so I mean uh, there's always people who like it more or less of course mm. you can't please everyone but uh, yeah I mean uh, uh, some people have been really excited and stuff and that makes us happy and uh, overall not getting like very um, negative stuff yeah, no but, haters yet. No haters yet. <laughs> uh, oh, now you said that there'll be all these haters. And... <laughs> uh, no, but... I just wondered, like, when you're making... So, you probably have your own ideas, obviously, of what, what this game is going to be like, but you do the Kickstarter, and then you mm. start hearing from people, and they're like, why don't you do this? Or how about mm. this idea? You know, or I don't like this, change this. I mean, how do you handle that? Do you, do you listen to that and discuss it, consider it? Uh, are you more like, no, this is our game. This is our vision. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you? Yeah. Make yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah we, we have the, the, the greater vision is on our side. So the, the main pillars, uh, we're going to follow our greater pillars, but uh, if there is something that is uh, asked from the players, like, please, can we have a, a minimap? Yeah, sure. We we can make a minimap because it doesn't interfere with the greater pillars. Mm. Like like co-op is a is a grand pillar of of ours. So if someone would say, "Can you please remove co-op?" then it would be, "No, we can't <laughs> remove co-op." Uh, so mm -hmm. so as long as it goes along with our grand pillars, then we we happily please people if 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 we can. Mm. Uh, but if someone wants us to to make a completely other game, then we say, sorry, this game probably isn't for you. So, yeah. Do you think, do you sort of prioritize the co op uh, mode, or is this going to be equally fun for somebody playing solo? Well, uh, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I answered the. Oh, no, I asked a tough question. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a tough one. I mean, we made it with co-op in mind from start so of course like some things single players will maybe not be as happy about like uh, right now at least how the ui work maybe we will uh, make separate stuff later but right now the ui is pretty like small and belong to like one side of the screen because we want we prioritized co-op so everyone can have their menus up at the same time instead of mm -hmm. taking up much space on the screen, for example. And some of the skills we maybe are, we try to make them as much as possible to like be fun in co-op as well and stuff like that. But we, we're we not like uh, making co-op only stuff. So we're always thinking like, all right, but if you play alone, is the skill still fun? Can we like, mm -hmm maybe add something a little bit so it's still good and uh, now that we have uh, added that you can conjure creatures and, and stuff like that we feel like it's easier to uh, still have all these co-op stuff but that can also work in single player like the riding stuff and you know so we do really try to accommodate to single players as well mm. uh, we don't want to them to feel left out and we also think that many many want to many people want to try the game alone first before dragging on the friends to see like mm -hmm. all right is this fun enough to you know ask my friends to join so yeah many parts that we still make sure it's not like cope only so but of course. It's like a pretty like good way to sell more copies too, because if you know one person likes it, they want to get three friends to play. Yeah. Three more, three more cells. Boom. 
Yeah, of course. Yes, that's what we hope. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some great questions here. Uh, Miko, Tired Gaming Dad, Vess, I think from your and Suzuki 4897 and Lizard Hunter. I think those are from your Discord. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we got Matt Bradley, Shergi, Tressy, uh, Brothers Games. So there's a lot of interest uh, in mm-hmm. this game. So you want you want to take a couple of questions here? Well, yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this uh, question is probably a pretty good place to start. So what do you think is the difference between a bad RPG and a good RPG in terms of game mechanics and design? Yeah, it's a hard one, I think. <laughs> we. Uh, what are your favorite I mean, RPGs other than your own game, of course? I know you mentioned <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, ooh, yeah. We like some lives. old school stuff that firstly comes to mind, I guess. Uh, we played a lot of Baldur's Gate, both the, uh, the classic CRPG like Baldur's Gate 2 uh one as well but two is our favorite <laughs> yeah and then uh, the dark alliance ones on uh, console is also fun uh, but yeah there are many do you have diablo 2 of course yeah is one. <laughs> of course uh chrono trigger yeah, comes to mind nice on the one. super nes mm. um yeah it's not in the, mentioned diablo 2 i played a lot uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, in Baldur's Gate, but also Icewind Dale. So, oh, Icewind Dale. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I love Icewind Dale. You know, not mm. everybody seems to like that game for some reason. Really? No, we oh. like it. <laughs> yeah, we play, we played it. Oh, it's got yeah, too much yeah, combat in it. I'm like, what do you mean too much combat? <laughs> <laughs> we 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 love to play co-op. So oh sure. Uh, so co-op was great for us in, in Icewind Dale as well. We enjoyed Baldur's Gate uh, uh, Shadows of Omni as well, of course, but Icewind Dale is a, it's a nice game. Good music and uh, interesting classes and, and uh, fights. And yeah, so so we like Icewind Dale as well. Mm. And I mean, uh, we have more modern things we like as well, like uh, uh, the Borderlands series is a good one or... Mm. The other shooter remnants we thought was fun, uh, and uh, yeah, there are oh, several more. <laughs> been the original sin. Yeah, uh, we kind of got stuck, but uh, <laughs> it was fun <laughs> until oh. then. We nowadays, you know, we you put that on the as bed. much tight time to play. <laughs> so when we get stuck, it tends to like. <laughs> have a hard time coming back to them a bit but yeah yeah we don't have much time uh, as we did uh, before playing games it's a lot of like trying new games and then not completing them (laughs) probably changes your do you think it's changes your love of games when you start to make them is that does it become more to play a game whereas before it was just fun yeah, I mean, of course, it's hard to sometimes not play a game and analyze it somehow. Ah. And mm. and some games you just want to play just to look how they did stuff, you know. Uh, but I think there's still games that we play and like can just, you know, turn off our brains a bit and just enjoy. So it's not like completely. Yeah, yeah. I play StarCraft. StarCraft 2, for example, mm. uh, that's a game that I, I, I don't analyze. I don't, you know, get stuck as a developer or something. I just play it. I think it's one of the best games uh, <laughs> there is. Um, so so just just uh, joy there. But yeah, it, 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 it uh, affects the when you play games, for sure, at least for us. Mm. Yeah, let's think about analyzing games. You know, I sometimes think that you can learn a lot by analyzing games that aren't good. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> you're like, what? Okay, we don't want to do this because this, you know, sucked. You know, you probably don't want to give a list of games. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. But but we do that as well. We we find the game like this has. Uh, uh, bad reviews or you know it's, yeah. it's known to be not good and we try it out and see what what's the fuss about why why do 
people not like it. So we do the, those analysis and anal- analysis as well. Mm, definitely. So. And we think it's very interesting. So, but that that's interesting as a developer, not uh, not as a player. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we played. Uh, we bought a, an old game not too long ago. Blood Knights. Blood Knights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like a vampire action RPG um, kind of stuff. Yeah. And that was like, okay, it was super cheap. And we heard that it's like, yeah, but maybe a bit fun. So, and yeah, that's what we think. <laughs> yeah, there were good bits and there were bad bits. Yes, <laughs> in it, so. So it was but fun to experience. So definitely like it was a bit like clunky controls some of them because you by mistake all the time picked up your friend instead Mm. of stuff like that and uh, the voice acting was and writing was you know (laughs) (laughs) fun at times (laughs) Uh, but uh, yeah Yeah, so nice so nice (laughs) oh yeah we're we're very (laughs) especially me I'm like no I Want to I mean, you don't want to trash somebody else's game. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we well, know. Sometimes the game is good. It's just maybe one or two little things and, you know, yeah. kind of mess it up. Mm. So, yeah. Well, so this game has real-time combat recordings. It's very action I was actually having a lot of fun with that boss with the, <laughs> the sort of circles mm-hmm. pop out and you're like, oh, I had to jump <laughs> and jump. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. really kind of uh, brought back some good memories, but... Now, what do you think is the, you know, you could have gone turn-based. That seems to be kind of a a style now, I guess, or a trend. Mm. Uh, Mm. Yeah, just wondering why you decided to go with uh, real-time. Do you think that's more immersive than the turn-based? or How do you feel about turn-based versus real-time? Yeah, definitely an immersion. Ola, you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, The immersion can, for me uh sometimes be broken with with the uh, turn based i love turn based uh, as as i mentioned like chrono trigger is one of my favorite games but uh, uh, for me it can be immersive breaking when characters stand and have their idle uh, animations but at the same time they just wait for someone to make a move it it feels a bit weird for me but the biggest uh, one big reason why we want to do action uh, real time was because of the co-op mm. uh, because we wanted both players to be able to do something mm. all the time and not be just waiting for someone to do their move so mm. yeah that's a really yeah, good really, point yeah it slows down <clears throat> the gameplay a lot and uh, I mean people you know, like different things. And we are a little bit more like impatient with turn-based mm. when playing together. Mm. So we feel like, uh, yeah, overall that action is, you know, more immersive that you, you kind of are the character and react in the moment and stuff. But uh, also, yeah, as well as at the co-op a lot that um, you don't have to just sit and wait. But mm. for, for some people, I guess... Uh, that's more relaxing, <laughs> but we are more like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's a solo player turn-based game, that's different than if you're sitting there. I was just thinking even with the game of chess, you know, if you watch the chess games, they have timers. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. just take forever, you know, to make your move because mm. some people will take, you know, 10 minutes if you let them. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. It's like, come on, I want to take yeah. you. come on. And so that's probably a great uh, point yeah yeah we we are pretty especially me i'm a pretty impatient gamer i don't have patience to to sit around either to wait or to to make uh, something grindy that is boring i don't mind grind but when it's boring grind and there's no thought or or challenge nothing then i get bored really quickly so we really try to remove uh, everything uh, like that because we uh, ourselves are, are pretty impatient so so 
try to think that others are as well. <laughs> the one only thing we aren't impatient is the story parts. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> yeah. we like like delving into story stuff. So mm. I guess that's what why we choose to have a little bit more there than maybe the typical uh, Diablo like. And the typical co-op game. The co yeah. co-op games doesn't tend to have a lot of story and, and reading and so on. And we, we understand that uh, we understand why, but uh, we we chose to do it anyway. So. You you can always click through it if you really, <laughs> <It> really <laughs> if you really is. want. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that if you know the World of Warcraft, if I play with friends, we always skip all the cutscenes and mm -hmm. we don't even read the quest text. You know. And so I had to go back later and play it solo. <laughs> just, <laughs> just to see what. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. I mean, there are definitely different kind of groups of when me and Vale play, we we're, we're, do read everything together. But when we play with uh, two other friends, then maybe it's more like hectic and we just let's go. So mm. it's really the group dynamic mm. that can change how I'm you play. I read uh, just recently read Ken Williams' book, and he talks in there. He's got what he calls the seven second rule. He says you mm -hmm. got to give the player something to do every seven seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, yeah. you, that sound right to you, or is it, I thought it was like, wow, that's a yeah. lot. Uh, I I wouldn't think that's yeah. I I mean it sounds right, right reasonable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean that's also if you just uh, with the dialogues and stuff. I mean we want. Of course, people to engage in them and stuff, but we also try to condense them and make sure it's not too much text at once. Because when you take too long time to read everything, then you know it's become slow. And so, yeah, it's definitely the impatience is yeah, but, something we. I like the way the demo was. I don't know how was the demo about the same level of text as going to be in the full game. I mean. It's about yeah. it's like a couple sentences here, a couple a couple lines here and there. I mean, it felt pretty good to me. Mm, I didn't feel like good. I was bored. No, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, here's a th oh yeah. I played games before where they it felt like it was two or three paragraphs or pages at a time. Mm. Mm. Wow, okay, this this should have been broken up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the good point to get a lot of keep the interest. It's not to overwhelm, you know. So we try. We will try to yeah, we, break we try, up as much as possible. Yeah, and we try to remove as much as much uh, unnecessary text and uh, information as possible. Yeah, yeah, it can be more like you can choose to read it if you want. Yeah, if you choose but... another line that is obvious, I want more information, then you can get more information. But uh, yeah, you can you can go through it really quickly and get the the most important information if you want. Mm. I really like this discussion because I've heard you say a couple of things I really like is one, taking out anything boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <trying> <laughs> Great <to> idea. <laughs> uh, taking out unnecessary text. Yes. You know, <laughs> it feels like sometimes the they, they developers like, well, the more lines of text, the better the game or, or the more, mm. you know, this, uh, the better. When really sometimes taking stuff out actually makes it better. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a balance all the time. I mean, we've, added the dialogue and then nah we remove this one and then mm -hmm. we move this text here instead and no now it's just too long and you know it's always like yeah. a lot of testing to see that uh, it's not too much anywhere at the same time but mm -hmm. it's not easy but uh we yeah it's a balance yeah and there there is also a, a very we are very keen to listen to people. If someone says, oh, this is boring or, or something like that, we, we really listen to it and see, okay, we, we, we have to improve this. Mm. Uh, this section, it doesn't, uh, it's not fun. So yeah, we yeah. listen a lot too. And of course, um, we will get some voice acting at least. So we hope that that will also help, of course, because voice acting always helps mm. uh, to make the reading or not only the reading is here, but to give more, you know, characters more of a personality or you get to know them better. So, um, are there particular voice actors that you'd really like to work with? 
Oh, I like know, a superstar doing... out there, you know. Ah, <laughs> superstar. You get like you just had unlimited funds, or there people. Oh, uh, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Geralt. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Uh, but he he must have a character that suits suits his uh, voice. Uh, I would say it was. It's always cool to to recognize someone's wo- voice. You know, uh, that's very common in in Baldur's Gate, uh, Shadows of Balm, and I assume they they use the same. Uh, you know that. Um, it's also cool that Irenicus is all. He's a real actor. He's in Titanic, so you recognize his voice there and. That's, uh, of course, a big plus if we, if we could do that, but the budget won't the allow. budget uh, <laughs> probably won't allow it, uh, unfortunately. But I was just looking up Jim Cummings. <laughs> <laughs> um, from Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he does a lot of stuff. Now, well, maybe we'll maybe people will watch this video and you'll, your your pledges will shoot up so much. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, then I will hire him. <laughs> Let's see what else we've got here. Yeah, I have some, a lot of questions about co-op and how this is going to work. Now, so what mm-hmm. if one party member completes a bunch of quests and then somebody else comes in? You know, mm-hmm. how, how are you going to handle that situation? Uh, yeah, so we thought of that really early, actually. So we split up your character progression. And, and with character progression, I mean items, level, your skills. That's in one save file. And then the world save file contains uh, quest progression mm. uh, and what, what you have done in the, in the world. So let's say we start a game and we progress through the world. Uh, then that's saved separately, like, like in the world and the character. If we want, uh, okay. then it's, it's my world. If Nani wants to uh, continue on her own, she can uh, continue as an own save file, world save file. I don't know if I... Can you fill in? <laughs> no, it's I hard mean... To explain, but, uh, I think... Uh, yeah, I think... So you can basically swap. If you if I want to join Wallace's game with another character, I can yeah, yeah. choose another character and join them. So it's not... We we try to make it that so you can drop in and out or like switch characters or we really want to make it as easy as possible to play. Yeah, co-op. and one one reason why we did that was also so you don't have to redo the story if you want to make another character you don't have to do the the story again mm-hmm. you only have to do it one you can jump into the same world and you can uh, level it up level your character your new character if you want to do that so mm. well, somebody would say level five or six let's say and then they mm. their level one friend comes in <laughs> mm. are you gonna like bump up that level one character with some extra powers or let them no <laughs> <laughs> they, they they will be weak yeah they, but they yeah. will level very fast oh, yeah they will level up very fast, if they so. go for the harder areas i guess mm-hmm. so. We yeah, have, but but yeah. no, there's no uh, like balancing scale if you are different levels. That that's up to the players. At at least that's our decision to to make it. If you want to play with someone, they should be around the same level. But playing like uh, let's say one player is level four and the other one is uh, level seven, they will be able to to play with each other with uh, without big issues. But one is level five and the other is level 20, then not gonna <laughs> go very well. But yeah, it's up to the players. We don't want to force anything or, or uh, interfere too much there, if you, if you understand our That's philosophy good. there. Mm. I've got a lot of questions about, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> it makes sense they'd be asking about the shapeshifter mechanics and mm-hmm. a lot of curiosity about those. A lot of people wondering how customizable is that going to be? Uh, how do you uh, create the different monsters? You know, they're mm. what makes them unique. Uh, let's see what else. Will they have different abilities outside of combat? Mm. 
Yeah, so that's a lot, of, a lot of good questions. In yeah, that. a lot of questions. Um, well, we can start with saying that. So basically, when you defeat the creature, there's a chance that it will drop an item of itself, basically. So creatures are like uh, items, so like weapons, basically. When you equip it, then you can turn into that monster like whenever, so freely, right? Um, and when you have it equipped and uh, you uh, fight with, with it, or then you level it, level it up and each monster type has a skill tree. So in there you can customize a bit what you want this beast to be able to, what skills will it be able to do, and what upgrades and stuff. Um, so uh, the items in themselves have some different stats and then you can upgrade it a bit differently and uh, the items itself can I mean the monsters can look a bit different with uh, different variations of them different models and colors uh, but also each item can be modified further with these things we call alterants. So basically modify, put in modifiers and they can sometimes also affect not only stats, but how the creature looks a bit. So you can get some special VFX on it or some kind of coding or color change and stuff like that. It's like uh, gems or runes yeah. in, in Diablo. Too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in that style. Uh, and then we haven't added it to the demo yet, but we do have uh, these creature accessories that you can like add, have a, let's say a color on the creature, for example. So you can also add some like armor pieces and bling bling <laughs> <laughs> to the creature, <laughs> pimp your creature. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff there, I think. Uh, uh, we wanted to make, uh, with the relatively few creatures we have, we still wanted to make like, there's a lot of stuff you can do with them and uh, customize them in different ways still. So I that was, was like a big I, overview. <laughs> the creature I was playing, I found, I don't know if it was a collar or some, some kind of accessory, mm. but it started off with like a poisonous spit that it was spitting at, at the monsters. And then I uh, found another one that was like an electric uh, yeah. collar. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's kind of cool. But then what was what I thought was really clever was I found a I won't give any spoilers here, but you know, mm -hmm. like some puzzles. <laughs> and you actually need the electricity to you know to do the puzzle. So like that's pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. there. And so you wouldn't want to just get rid of that electric ability. Mm -hmm. uh, you had more points than the the poison because it might help you get through a puzzle. Yeah. So. The elements definitely can be used in different obstacles. And then there are some, some obstacles that are more like this creature is needed. So the easiest example is that there are certain like rocks and walls that are cracked that uh, a certain creature can like ram into and destroy. Oh. Um, and uh, some creatures jump farther so they can reach further jumps and stuff like that and um yeah so we have those sort of like um each creature can have their little speciality to make it easier to explore or reach places where others can't so it's always good to have a couple of backup creatures <laughs> mm -hmm. to change between so yeah, I, was some, I want to. I keep calling, thinking of it as my cat. When it, you know, it was obviously was a monster, but it was like a <laughs> cat-like creature, and it was it was mm. a lot of fun, like running and jumping and just barely make it to the. You know, mm. part, kind of reminded me of something like Tomb Raider, I guess. Huh. Mm. Uh, sort of platforms and thinking. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. How many uh, creatures are you going to have? Uh, but is that still up for? You're still planning that, or is there a certain amount? <sighs> Or well, it... we have um, six creature, main creature types now, and we hope to be able to add a seventh we have started with, but uh, we'll see. It's a stretch goal, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll see. There we go. Uh, 
if we can reach it, it's the first one. It's not too far off, so we hope, uh, because it needs a bit more work and a bit more models. Um, but uh, yeah, each creature has like three uh, model variations as well. So they have different like elemental types and stuff. So they are quite different still. Uh, and of course, if it goes well enough, then we hope to have to release add more, but we'll see. Yeah, so the monsters, I was looking to see if I could find a list of the ones, but they're, are they all going to be sort of scary? <laughs> you going to have <laughs> a cute monster in there? I mean... <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I, mean, I guess they are more of the scary <laughs> side. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think some of them are cute, but that's maybe me. <laughs> They're not really super cute, but uh. yeah, we we thought about that, and, and we didn't we didn't want to make them too cute because it feels wrong to go around killing them. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> badass monsters, personally, but. <laughs> <laughs> And we should talk. I don't see a question here, but we need to talk a little bit about uh, the setting of this because I think it's really cool the sort of post apocalyptic uh, vibe to this. You know, that's some, somewhat unusual. You know, there's so mm -hmm. many games that are fantasy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a little different, you know. Is that is that inspired by certain books or? We're taking inspiration from I don't know everywhere. Yeah, yeah many <laughs> but, things. But uh, many things. But yeah, I mean. I guess Horizon Zero Dawn is, I mean, we did think about it a bit before, but mm -hmm. it kind of even more, we like that world as well. So it was even more like, oh, this is like this vibe we're going for, like this post post kind of apocalyptic, but they have these robots, so it's different, but still um, like a, a lot of, this uh, old mixed with new, we think it's kind of cool. Uh, I think, and we also have this, um, you know, a, a lot of games go for maybe the popular like Norse mythology or something, and it's cool, and we I like it as well. But we wanted to have a different like flavor of it, and came onto this like inspired in the future world or a more Middle Eastern slash Indian uh, like origin on many stuff. So, I mean, it's a mix of it. Yeah, it grew over many years, so it's hard to pinpoint one inspiration, but um, yeah, it's it's a Unique mix that I think has been really fun exploring and writing about. So, mm. and the Avatar movie is also one inspiration. The world from uh, Avatar, uh, James Cameron's Avatar. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I had a, there's a question about it, but I think pretty clear. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah I mean, me and Valle overall. It's fun to explore and learn the. The story, mm. not just the same old, you know, <laughs> as much as mm. I like Tolkien or whatever. <laughs> mm. It's nice to have a little variety and something. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's really uh, a lot of what we like. Like, uh, we went into game development because we wanted to make, you know, something of our own, something different, not uh, just the same stuff. And so that shows a lot, I think, in our game that we're willing to like try with this maybe a bit different ideas, and not uh, not so tested ideas sometimes, mm -hmm. but a little bit of that. So we, yeah, nothing wrong with the uh, existing things, and and you know, but we as a developer, we are very creative. As Nain says, it wants to try things, try new things and different things, see see how it goes. Hmm. Yeah, not like maybe crazy innovative yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff, but you know, a little bit different here, a little bit different there. Mm. <laughs> Find innovative. our own spin. Well, let's see a quick, a quick question here. Uh, will there be more color options than the given for orange, sky blue, etc.? 
I guess they're wondering how many color options will be in the final game. Yeah, but... so right now, yeah, each character has their own color, so and right now it's not able to change, but uh, we will have like for those who want to, there's a little like on the Kickstarter, there's a support option that you can change the color of your character. So it's, of course, you can change between them, but we will also add a couple more colors, of course. So yeah, it will be a little bit more customizable later on. Hmm. Oh, this is the one I was looking for. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like this is a good one. Uh, not that the other questions aren't good, but uh, this one mm. I'm curious about. Uh, what were the inspirations for the four siblings? Or I guess why I have it set up, you know, with four siblings. <laughs> yeah, it also grew over time, but, um, you know, we wanted to make a story about, uh, that's about family as well. Hmm. And uh, it's a bit also intertwined in the lore and I won't bore too much, but with these gauntlets and stuff, um, we really wanted to make it feel like it's natural for these characters to go on an adventure of this kind together and uh, really like just focus on lifting their different personalities and their dynamics and stuff. And I don't know, we thought it was a fun and cool approach basically uh, and with the co-op like in mind. I know everyone has different relationships with their siblings, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh our sibling team we are quite like a close and um, good team dynamics with each other already but um, you two come from big families <laughs> lots of well, brothers yeah. <laughs> uh, at least yeah. his family yeah. squeezy <laughs> i have four siblings yeah you have two two yeah, yeah. so yeah was, yeah we we wanted to the the place to feel connected uh, from the start because we want it to be co-op from the start i like the way you describe that about how you know, a lot of games you're like why are these people together <laughs> <laughs> oh, we Icewind Dale is one. <laughs> like this is their family so of course they're gonna do things you know together mm. that makes a lot of sense yeah i like that okay let's you got time for a few more yeah yeah, yeah. sure, sure cool man <laughs> Uh, what are your long-term plans for this game? Mm. Will you, when do you want to go? We're going to be working on I can start. 10 years. <laughs> it, sequels? I mean, what do you envision? Well, hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we do have uh, plans for things you can do after you complete the story and so on. Right now, we, we only have the, the guard missions. Uh, and that's fun and all but our goal is to have more modes and more more things a, a bigger variety of things you can do but uh, we all one thing that is uh, that we think is important uh, is to add very challenging bosses so you have a goal with your uh, progression so you, you know, I really want to find that item or I really, really want to upgrade this or get to this level because then I can beat the, the extra hard boss. So that's also a thing that we want to, to do. Uh, yeah, but, but um, again, be creative be with the modes, different modes and create fun modes. Uh, that's really something we look forward to in doing hopefully we'll get there mm. and that's like the more like uh, yeah after the main story parts but of course um if time and budget allows we'd love to add like more post launch content like new creatures and stuff like that new and new areas new areas and of course there's always for us we i mean we love creating new stuff and put it in there so <laughs> We're always open for it, but of course, it will depend on what people want and yeah. uh, the receptionist. If we have budget to do stuff, and we're 
we'll see just how everything goes of course yeah well, of course we will listen to to request it if no one ask for the things that we have in mind <laughs> and don't want it and everyone oh. no don't <laughs> do this instead then we might change so do you have a rat like creature a rat like <laughs> <laughs> you want one <laughs> no yes it's mandatory <laughs> <laughs> yeah put that on you know i like to love a little rat right no no don't make it a little rat make it like big. a big rat a big rat <laughs> Badass rat. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. <Who> <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. And we love the requests as well. Mm -hmm. We also got a request well, about everybody that. wants that. I mean, I, that's gotta be the most common request, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the first, I think. <laughs> a rat, but just ask anybody. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have to ask more around it, I guess. <laughs> a, a a bug or um a beetle kind of creature that has been requested before i think cool yeah that's oh, cool it's a rat <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> spider <laughs> there were i think you've already answered this though you're talking about some replayable in-game content mm. i think you were already talking about that though yeah yeah anything mm. else this is kind of i'm not quite sure what this means i'm trying to interpret this when the game is released, would the money that is collected after purchase also contribute to adding the plant stretch goals? Or will these stretch goals, if not reached, sorry, it's kind of a complicated question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, will well, the stretch goals, if not reached, never see the light of day once this Kickstarter ends? Okay, yeah, I see. Yeah. So we have so some stretch you goals. Make the stretch goals, will you still put the stuff in there, I guess is what mm. they're... Yeah. And... Uh... It's a hard question and we won't, I mean, we can't promise, but I mean, of course we want to, we put those stretch goals in the Kickstarter because we want to do those things. Yeah, yeah, but of course, if uh, we get a lot of, uh, I mean, when we release it, as it, the question said, if we when we release it and get more budget, then and we have a lot of requests for one of the stretch goals or several then of course we'll consider adding them if we can so for example we have this uh, ai companion stretch goal pretty mm. much and pretty high stretch goal but i know that some people are still asking for it so yeah. i guess that if the game goes well enough then we can that could be a thing we add later on ai companion yeah, I mean, right now you can just go uh, alone or conjure creatures, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, some people want to have like uh, like a mercenary with them or like in Diablo or something. So well, we, we could, uh, yeah, so yeah, we but could we... add that one that you can bring one sibling with you. Yeah, bring a but, sibling. But it, uh, yeah, it's a lot of work to implement that, so... Uh, we'll see but that will be for you know the single players that don't want to feel alone <laughs> so they can bring a sibling with them pretty much yeah, but, yeah. I thought you're talking about like a cortana <laughs> yeah okay, okay no oh yeah sorry and um makes sense and yeah computer controlled sibling pretty much <laughs> yeah computer controlled sibling that's not like a <laughs> i like to have something like that mm. I, I, did I ask how long you've been working on this? <laughs> We've talked about that. Yeah, when a long, it... long time. <laughs> so, well, we officially... Yeah. Sorry? No, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, officially count from 2018, because that's when we like started the studio and decided to uh, we're going to make this game. So, yeah, what's that? Five, six years? But we started prototyping it even before that. <laughs> so, but then we were working full time on other things and just. And we're just learning. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've been learning for a long time. I mean, uh, uh, the one reason that it's taking so long is that we're working part time on this, so not full time. And also that, uh, yeah, we have taken a lot of time to learn. Uh, we have no education in game. 
uh, development. Mm. We, we have different... Uh, uh, I'm a, 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 an educated teacher and then it's... Uh, uh, how do you say? A chemical uh, engineering. Uh, chemical engineering. So you come from... A chemical like, engineer and a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a weird combo. but Yeah, so... It's like grown from the hobby to uh, trying to get more and more into like this commercial project, pretty much. <clears throat> what um, are, you, I don't know if it's, I saw where. What, what engine are you? Are you using an engine or is this? Yeah, Unity. 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 Oh yeah. So what mm. do you think? Is that going pretty well for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm kind of a hubbub with Unity these days. So. Yeah, I don't mm. know, but I mean, it's how it's. We really like the engine to work in it, so. You know, it's hard to, but yeah, we hope that uh, things will be a bit better in the other regard. So in the uh, goodwill of com the unity, <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah. Uh, unity is, it, it's really a good engine. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't underestimate it. Uh, mm. It is a very good engine. Uh, and, and, and really it's also a very good engine, of course. Uh, but uh, feels like, Nowadays, everyone looks down. Oh, it's made in Unity, but it's a very strong <laughs> engine. Uh, so, yeah. Totally. You know, I've used it quite often. I enjoy it. I like mm. the, the asset store components really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I just I like just browsing sometimes and see what all the mm. assets are available. Just kind of mm. my imagination going sometimes looking at that. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Plus, it's easy when you're done, right? You can make it for various platforms. Yeah, yeah. It's not so. stuck on one mm. platform. I like that a lot. <clears throat> Although there is one problem. I, I don't know if you run into this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you make it, everything's working, but then there's like a new version of Unity comes out. And oh. then you update or upgrade, <laughs> and then suddenly it breaks everything. Have, have you had that happen? Yeah, Nerdy I mean. One version and don't upgrade. <laughs> uh, we have been working it for a long time so we had to have upgraded it mm. uh, and like there's this major upgrade also once when we went for the new pipeline and stuff the render pipeline yeah that was a lot of work to you know we got this uh, pink uh, everything ev oh. every material was missing and it was just pink scene so we're like <laughs> no <laughs> like somebody put uh, some Pepto-Bismol on the screen yes yeah, so, yeah. Huh. yeah like it's missing some assets it's trying to load mm. again the reference yeah that's yeah so it's it's always some things that can break when you change but right now we've been on our version quite long so we'll see yeah but it, it was uh worth it to upgrade mm. uh because the newest unity i think looks much better with the lighting and post-processing and and so on so yeah i mean the game looks fantastic uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Controls well. I mean, I think it looks good. Well, let's see. Maybe I'm just going to check real quick to see if I've got anything here that really wanted to ask about. I think we can just wrap up here with this last question. Yeah, there was a question about quest design, but I. You have a particular thoughts about what goes into a good quest? <laughs> Um, we've all, we've all yeah. seen those quests are like kill 10 bears and get the <laughs> classic know, paw, yeah. that sort of thing yeah I mean um, for me I think or for us I think that's uh, to make like a quest that's interesting in some way where you um, learn more about the world the character or um, and also to have a bit of choice maybe I mean there's a lot of components so, of course, a quest just kill 10, this can be fun as well. But if it's only those, then yeah, it can be so a bit of variation as well. But we really do try to, yeah, depending on the area, on the who you're talking to and like keep things interesting. But that's, of course, uh, depending on how much you like reading and stuff as well. <laughs> If you I have a lot of side quests, or is this going to be mostly just the, the main quest line? Or is everything... Yeah, we have uh, some side quests as well, so you can delve into if you like to explore not only just like 
side quests where you have to talk to NPCs, you can also just go explore and find stuff. But yeah, definitely um, there will be some side quests to the. Let me ask you a question then, because that's something we've been talking about over on my Discord channel. Do you think uh, it's good when you have a game with a main, sort of a main quest line and then you got all these side quests, right? So mm -hmm. the question is, do you, uh, if players just rush through and they only do the main quest line, should they be able to defeat those, those bosses and mm -hmm. finish the game? Or, or should it be such that you, you do need to do all the side quests and explore everything thoroughly to get enough power uh, to defeat the uh, the boss? Mm -hmm. How do you come down on that? <laughs> it's a fun question. We actually discussed it yeah, yeah, too yeah. long ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, it's a hard one, but I mean, we I guess we are a little bit more like if you go straight to the main, it's not like we don't do like these hard checks or something, but it will be tougher than if you go and you now explore, find new stuff and let, get some XP here and there. So we definitely want to nudge players more into, you know, exploring and uh, doing other stuff than just the main. But at the same time, if, you know, you're quite skilled and just like to just go on and get it over with, I guess, mm. or not interested in like the other stuff, then we're not stopping you like can do that as well. But it's kind of harder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One advantage that we have is it's action based. So you can be skilled as a player and, and make it uh, due to that. Uh, but as Nani said, uh, as we discussed, we, uh, if we make it so we, we do the balancing. So if you go only do the ma main quest, it's uh, decently challenging. Then it would be like if you do the side quests or the side quest, then the main story would be super, super easy. And mm. that's not fun. Uh, so that's why we... We made that decision, so the balancing should be challenging. If you just do the main story, not impossible, but more challenging. But if you do the side quest, you you reach a level, so it's easier. And that's also one way of uh, changing the difficulty for yourself to to do other stuff in the game. If you think it's that this is too hard, I can't. I, I'm not skilled enough. I don't have patience to be it. Then you can do go do other stuff and come back, and then you're higher level and you can beat it. Well, that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just it's been bugging me lately. Apparently, nobody else has this, this issue, but I find that mm -hmm. lots of the games I've been playing lately, because I'm the kind of guy I want to see everything. You know, I'll, I'll explore everything I can get to, and then I'll end up uh, being super high level, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll even hit a level cap. <laughs> mm. I'm not even done with the game and I'm already like maximum level and there's oh, yeah. uh -huh. no and, you know, it's almost like I've been punished mm. uh, you know I've, even worse I noticed uh I've been playing some uh World of Warcraft again mm. I noticed with that they've got the level scaling to this point <laughs> it's so bad mm. now <laughs> you know, you'll actually be moved out of the area before you're even done exploring everything because oh, no. high level and it's mm. like well now you got to go to this other zone I'm like what? <laughs> I haven't mm. even done all the I haven't even done all the quests here. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah. So yeah, I think you're on the money there. That's good. That's good. Okay. Well, let's do, do one last question. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your favorite part of working on a game together? What's the most challenging? Favorite part? Uh, designing yeah. things together is really fun. Mm. I think it's. Uh, decided how it should be and then implementing it and see um, that it, it, it really succeeding in the design. We design, we have a thought of something, it should be played like this or it should be work like this and it should lead that, to this. And then it does, then we feel very satisfied and, and happy about it. Mm. Yeah, we definitely talk about design a lot all the time breakfast yeah. and dinner <laughs> <laughs> so wow. yeah the signing is like coming up with ideas and what to implement and how and mm -hmm. 
not only new stuff, but also like how will we make players do this or understand this? And so a lot of design, I think it's fun to discuss and do today together. Mm. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and like, Eureka, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe so, but we don't wake each other up. <laughs> not to do <laughs> not that. Wake up, no. wake up. You got to do that. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> No. Oh, that would be too much. That would be horrible. <laughs> and I guess oh, for the challenging part, it's. I mean, sometimes I guess we both we work together and are, uh, we are partners and stuff, and that can make. Um, I mean, it's up. It's like a roller coaster, right? Sometimes it's really, really good, and everything is going good, and sometimes. Uh, you get some bad news or not so much as a result as you wanted from like a marketing activity or something. I'm just like, yeah. And you get these uh, lower points. And what I think it's hard sometimes is that we both are at the same, like when something goes good, we're both happy. And when it goes bad, we're both sad. And then when we're both sad, it's hard to like, you know support each other and yeah, break to... break out of the loop because yeah. we can make it each other even sadder if i'm sad i make her sad and he, she <laughs> makes me even sadder and, ah. so we like spiral yeah like we this. have to break out of that loop it can be tricky sometimes yeah that can be challenging to like um yeah get out of but yeah. usually it takes a little bit of time a day or two and then we're <laughs> yeah come back but and yeah. our, our discipline, I think, I think uh, is helping us because mm -hmm. <clears throat> we we just keep at it. We the next day we go up and we we work as usual, and then something good happens, and then mm. we go and get out of there. So our our discipline just keep move move on is mm. uh, helping us. Mm. So. You know, just if uh, this game just takes off like nobody's business and you know does extremely well, is there is there a point mm. where you'd be like, I want to do this full time? Or is it more like, no, <laughs> it's just a hobby? No, definitely. Just a I think definitely, we, definitely full time. Yeah, we uh, we think it's a lot of fun and like to do it full uh, time. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the dream, like, I guess. Yeah, us. and we yeah. would like to scale up as well, to mm -hmm. hire more people. and uh, That would be mm, fun, yeah. Yeah. Not like we, a huge team, but, yeah, yeah, but some yeah. more people to help us because we want to make even nicer and games and so yeah be able to do more ambitious things this is very very ambitious but <laughs> yeah make it even more <laughs> ambitious <laughs> that's our dream <laughs> mm. on voice acting yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's that's awesome. Awesome. is there anything else you wanted to talk about or we I think we covered all the questions yeah i think so i uh, hope it didn't yeah. hope it didn't leave off anything of Important, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck to you guys. I mean, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I mean, you've already made the uh, the Kickstarter goal, but I think the stretch goals will be the next step, right? So maybe, maybe yeah, uh, yeah. Folks Let's hope for them. <laughs> <laughs> Pop over, make a pledge, up a pledge. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> especially that rat stretch goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you make that rat a stretch goal, I mean, just set that at like one million. Yeah, <laughs> then we're we're gonna go. Then we're set <laughs> straight up. <laughs> you get there, pay up, people. We gotta have the rat. Yes. Mm. All right. Well, thanks again. I'm really looking forward to playing the game. Good chat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Be looking forward to it. Maybe I'll have you back on. We have a the, the sequel coming out. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Always happy to. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, definitely uh, download their demo uh, or maybe just uh, look at the videos because they've only got four days left on their Kickstarter you know, as I'm recording this. So if you wait too long, it'll be too late. You know, they've already met their minimum uh, pledge goal to make the game, but they got some really cool stretch goals. And, you know, I like to see them, uh, you know, do a little better <laughs> as they roll in. <laughs> You know, if for no other reason than they're a, you know, a, a couple, 
And we've seen how great uh, that works out. So many, so many cases in history. Uh, quest for glory. <laughs> of course, King's Quest. <laughs> you know, I bet you there's probably some more if you really sat down to think and thought about it. Oh, Serpent in the Staglands, of course. Uh, was Joe and Hannah. I believe I should get them back on at some point. I wonder what they're working on. Uh, but anyway, do go to the Kickstarter page for Coverton if you like what you see. Because uh, uh, <laughs> once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, as always, I want to thank you very, very, very much for your support of the show. Matt Chet could not and would not do it without you. You are the <laughs> secret sauce, <laughs> the secret cheese that keeps these um, uh, rats in line. So thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can always like it. Uh, here on uh, YouTube, you can subscribe to it if you haven't done that. You can share it with friends. Uh, but most importantly, you can go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon page and become a retron just like Bosch Golem has done. <laughs> so, uh, you can, any amount of money, one-time thing, or, a, <clears throat> or maybe you like the idea of a small monthly uh, payment. Uh, whatever works for you, whatever's convenient, it's easy. I think you'll have a good time. You like the show that much better if you support it. Uh, so thank you once again uh, for supporting good old Matt Chet. Oh, and by the way, uh, I know there's a couple of credits that need to be updated. Uh, I've sent that to Matt. Unfortunately, he is on vacation. Yeah, she's kicking it back. <laughs> having a good time. <laughs> uh, but when he gets back uh, from his well-earned rest, uh, he will certainly update those. So my apologies if it still seems to be lagging. It's not that I haven't heard you. It's just that Matt prefers to party. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see. What about that news from the Matt Cave? <laughs> Oh, what all we have here? Miko Selva writes in about the Lost Legends of Red Wall. Yes, that Red Wall, those fun little uh, novels about mice. And uh, let's see, this is the Scout Anthology. This is Brian Jacques, of course, the original author uh, of this series. Uh, vicious sea rats are invading the once peaceful moss flower wood and is up to the Lily Grove Scout Corps' newest recruit to save the day. Play as Sophia or Liam on their adventure to Redwall Abbey. <laughs> and this looks like a lot of fun. It's currently a 20% off on Steam. Uh, maybe not for everybody, but you know, if you like puzzle adventure games and you like, the, of course, the Redwall series, you're not, you don't want to miss this. <laughs> uh, but if you do check it out, let me know what you think. Uh, I'd be curious to hear from you. Uh, and there's some really awesome news. Remember, uh, I don't know if you remember this far back. Some of you old-time Mad Chat supporters remember when I interviewed Fred Ford and Paul Ritchie uh, back in episode 95. <laughs> so it's been quite a while. <laughs> of course, they were uh, in that series talking about their upcoming uh, Skylander series. Uh, well, they did so well with these Skylander games and the toys, they decided to uh, retire from doing that and just do what they do best, or what they love best anyway. Uh, the StarCraft, uh, no wait, Star Control <laughs> games, yes, not to be confused with StarCraft. Uh, so this is called Free Stars, the Urquan Masters, and it's on Steam, and it is free. I don't know, <laughs> it's okay, it's free. <laughs> yeah, maybe they really made a lot of money on the Skylander series, they don't even want money anymore. Uh, but anyway, travel to hyperspace, discover alien worlds, meet an eclectic cast of characters. You know, if you dig around on their website, you see this is kind of a, a part of a long-term plan. Uh, so they probably are going to build on this, maybe see if they can gauge the interest in their uh, franchise, maybe get people looking at it again before they start rolling out some newer stuff. Uh, but anyway, this looks really cool, and it's free, so <laughs> how can you argue with that? <laughs> uh, go check it out, Free Stars, the Urquan Masters. Uh, and then finally, Lobsterminator wrote in with this little uh, rumor, I guess, uh, not confirmed. I tried to do a little uh, research on this, wasn't able to find anything uh, much newer than this, but it's about Sony, uh, and they have the uh, VR2 PlayStation virtual reality system, uh, of course, for the PlayStation, but it sounds like there's some interest there in making it uh, PC compatible or do, uh, letting uh, PC people <laughs> uh, use this headset as well. 
And that's significant because according to at least one source I saw, it's the only recent PC-capable VR headset with OLED panels. It doesn't require Steam VR base stations and controllers. Uh, and it's the most affordable. And so it sounds like it'd be, you know, it's a pretty uh, interesting thing if they uh, go through with this. You know, maybe the uh, VR2 might become the de facto standard, you know, if they play their cards right, at least on the PC side. But anyway, I like to keep my eyes on that. You know, I've been late to this VR thing. I, I don't have an Oculus or uh, any VR headset. About the closest I have to any of that stuff is the old Viewmaster. <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but I haven't gotten into this, uh, all this stuff. And I, I, to tell you the truth, it seems like the standards are changing so fast. You know, I, I, I hate to buy something get st and then get stuck with a, you know, something that doesn't get supported uh, much <laughs> later than what I bought it for. <laughs> you know, I'd love to hear from you if you've had a chance to play around with any of this stuff. The uh, uh, that was Apple Vision Pro. You know, have you tinkered with that? Love to hear from you. Uh, or what do you think about this uh, PlayStation VR 2? You know, is there a lot of potential here? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, of course, as well as the Quest and all the rest of it. Uh, all right, what about that ale of the week? Yeah. Uh, who, needs, who, <laughs> who needs virtual reality? <laughs> or who needs a VR headset when you've got beer goggles? Yes, work much better, much cheaper. Uh, but uh, this is not really going to be beer goggle time. <laughs> this is, unless we are severely mislabeled. Uh, uh, but anyway, BrewDog, I've had a lot of their beers on the show before, of course. Make some excellent brews. Uh, and apparently they're really uh, gung-ho for the non-alcoholic uh, niche. And they got quite a few. Uh, so many, they actually put together a variety pack. Uh, so I'll be hopefully trying the... Uh, various uh, varieties they included in said pack, uh, starting with one called Nanny State. <laughs> so, you know, I always like a, I'm a sucker for a good marketing campaign. That's pretty fun. Uh, so like all the non-alcoholics, you know, it's 0. 0.5, less than 0.5%. High flavor, low alcohol is what they promise, which that is exactly what I am looking for. So we will give that a test today. Let's see, anything else here? You know, sometimes I really think they should tell you the, I'm not going to keep saying this over and over, but I really wish they would list the hops that they use. Cause just, I'm always interested to see what they're uh, putting in these things. But uh, I don't see that here. Let's see. These guys are out of Ohio. Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Driven by passion and united by brew dog. Non-alcoholic flavored near beer, they call this. <laughs> I haven't seen that before. <laughs> near beer. Okay, sure, sure, brew dog. <laughs> that, that'll totally catch on. <laughs> it probably has. Uh, anyway, let's get this sucker open. Okay, I pour some in this really nice clear glass so you can see what the color looks like and the the head and the foam. Oh, that does smell hoppy. Lots really good activity there. Just. Thousands of bubbles, man. I'm liking the scent, liking the look of that. Ah, smells good. Smells got kind of got that fused wire <laughs> aroma. <laughs> you ever been messing around with electronic stuff and you smell like this kind of? I, I don't know how to describe it other than burnt wires. It's kind of electrical fire. <laughs> That's some good stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, see that the house is about to burn down, and we got some nice hoppy beer. Okay, try some of the drinking horn first. Now this smells really good, uh, really hoppy, a little bit of a, a little citrusy. I guess you could say a little smoky. <laughs> Not in the usual way people mean that. Uh, let's give it a taste here. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> you know, this is one, I'll try the glass too. Uh, but man, you know, just the smell and the, and the, and the look of it, you sure do think <laughs> you know what this is going to taste like. <laughs> it's going to taste just like a good old, uh, you know, hoppy pale ale. Uh, then you taste it, and it's definitely not the, you can tell this is not <laughs> the standard pale ale. You know, something's going on here. Let's give it another swig here. Yeah, this is a, uh, hmm. 
gotta say I'm not really too happy with that first taste uh, uh, not getting a lot of flavor uh, actually just a seem kind of like watery uh, ugh. <laughs> sometimes the horn makes a difference so we'll give the uh, glass a try so it really nailed the smell <clears throat> and the body on it but yeah I mean it's not terrible it's just a really, really light. <laughs> it's just, you know, this is more like something you would use to hydrate yourself during a workout. You know, it's like, oh, I'm thirsty, and let me have some of this. And just really no flavor to this at all. You know, I feel like I've had sparkling waters with more with more bite and punch than this. I'm really shocked. Now, I was really kind of going into this with some uh, fairly high expectations given BrewDog's reputation, but yeah, this one is, uh, I'll give it one more try. <clears throat> yeah, I just got to say, I would uh, I would probably pass on this one. Uh, not a whole lot of, really not much flavor <laughs> at all. Got a nice aroma, but you know, as soon as you taste this, you're like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> this is one of those non-alcoholic beers, isn't it? Uh, near beer, <clears throat> I guess. You know, I have a lot of their other uh, varieties, so we'll <laughs> uh, keep that in mind. But yeah, yeah, I think it'd be much better off with some of the ones I tried on the show earlier, uh, even the ones that I thought were okay. <laughs> yeah, because this one, eh. Now, I'd probably go, uh, maybe, uh, I want to give it a one out of five, but probably a two out of five. If we just stick to non-alcoholic beers only, you know, maybe somewhere between a two and a three, but probably, you know, again, I think that uh, the Claus Taylor, <laughs> I keep bringing that one up, <laughs> and it's going to be hard to, I'm starting to think that one's just going to really be impossible to beat, you know, if even BrewDog's really struggling, uh, you know, this hard to come up with, uh, you know, something drinkable. Uh, uh, of course, compared to all beer, yeah, <laughs> forget about it, zero. <laughs> you know, I'd probably, uh, even go for a old Milwaukee or a Bud Light uh, over this. Uh, okay, if I'm gonna give it that harsh, if, we're, <laughs> if I'm gonna be that harsh, I should try it one more time. Yeah, it's just it's just nothing there. It's uh, you know, I remember I tried a something called hop water. <laughs> it's literally just kind of a sparkling water with some hops, uh, and even that tasted more like a beer than this. And so I'm just, <laughs> you know, it had to happen eventually. You had to have a beer that you just don't like. Um, and this nanny state is going to be that beer for me. I'm glad I didn't start with this uh, for my alcohol or non-alcoholic uh, uh, series because I'd probably just say, okay, to hell with it. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, you know, you're going to be really sad in life if you're drinking NAs only. Uh, but thankfully, as we know, there are better. Uh, non-alcoholic beers to choose from all right anyway uh, for that let's wrap it up with a quotation and i was looking for quotes by great science fiction authors and i found one by the great isaac asimov it goes something like this for my close observation of writers they fall into two groups one those who bleed copious, copiously and visibly at any bad review. And two, those who bleed copiously and secretly at any bad review. <laughs> so there's uh, uh, some truth there from somebody who has written many, many books and probably received many, many, many <laughs> reviews. <laughs> Isaac Asimov. Okay, I'll ponder on that and I'll see you guys next time.
Vasquez. Have you ever been mistaken for a man? No. Have you? 